If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before moving on. What we need to do in order to find the acceleration and the tension is draw a free body diagram for both of the masses. Let's start with the one that's colored in red. So here is that mass and we're going to draw some forces that are acting on the mass. Now, there is the gravitational force which points straight down, which we can call mg. However, whenever we have an object on an incline, what we want to do is break that mg into both its x component as well as a y component. So let's actually back up and let's label an x component that's parallel to the surface of the ramp. And then we're going to have a y component that's perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. And it turns out that for inclined problems, the component that's parallel to the surface of the ramp is always going to be mg times the sine of whatever angle the ramp is making with the horizontal. So in this case, a 30 degree angle. And then it turns out that the component of gravity perpendicular to the surface of the ramp will always be mg times the cosine of that angle. Now there are other forces acting on this red colored box. We have the string which is connected to the box and that's going to exert a tension force and then we have a normal force that the ramp is exerting on the box and that is also perpendicular to the surface of the ramp and we can just label that n now it's important to define a negative and positive direction that's parallel to the surface of the ramp and to figure out what is suitable let's look back at the picture and it's going to turn out that since the blue object is at a steeper incline, it's at a 45 degree angle, it turns out therefore it's going to accelerate down the ramp, the blue object will be. Now as the blue object accelerates down its ramp, it's going to pull the red object up its ramp. And so we know that the red box is going to move up the ramp, so it's advantageous to call up the ramp the positive direction and then this direction the negative. And that's going to become important later on. Let's draw the free body diagram, which will be very similar for the blue box. And so here is that free body diagram. Notice again that the component of gravity parallel to the incline is mg times the sine of the angle that the incline is making. And the component of gravity that's perpendicular is mg times the cosine of that angle, just like it was before in the other free body diagram. We also have the normal force and the tension. As stated, the blue box is going to be accelerating down its ramp, so let's call down that ramp the positive direction and then up that ramp the negative direction. What we'll do next is apply Newton's second law to the first object, and we're going to do so specifically in this direction here, what we could call the x direction. And so we know that Newton's second law tells us that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Again, looking at just the forces in this direction here, the direction parallel to the ramp, we have the positive tension force and then the negative mg sine 30. Those represent the sum of the two forces in this direction. And we can set that equal to the mass times the acceleration. And then over on the other object, we have a similar situation, except in the positive direction, looking at this direction here, we have mg times the sine of 45. So that's a positive force because it's going in the positive direction. And then the tension here is negative. So we have minus T and we'll set that equal to MA. Now, again, we're looking for the A and the T value. And one way of doing that would be to stack these two equations on top of each other. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've gone ahead and stacked the two equations on top of one another. And what we're going to do is a little trick here. We're going to add the two equations together. And if you look carefully, you can see that we have a positive tension T and then a negative tension T. When we add those together, they're going to cancel out. And then we'll have the positive mg sine of 45. And then when we add it to this negative mg sine of 30, we're going to have a minus mg sine of 30. And then we'll set that equal to the right-hand side, which will be MA plus MA, which is just going to be 2MA. Now, we'll notice that the mass appears in all the terms of the equation. So if we divide each term by the mass, it's going to actually cancel out. And so we can simplify the equation. We could then perhaps factor out a G, just to be a little bit algebraically fancy here. So we're going to have sine of 45 minus the sine of 30 after we factor out g. Now that's set equal to 2a. And what we'll do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. 
And that way these twos will cancel and we'll have the acceleration solved for. And now we can just pick up our calculators and type in the expression right here. And that's going to give us the value of the acceleration. And when we do that, we should get about 1.01 meters per second squared. Make sure your calculator is set to degree mode when you do that since our angles were measured in degrees. So this is the answer for the acceleration. Now for the tension, we can go back and choose either the red or the blue equation and solve for the tension. Let's do the red equation. So we have T minus mg sine 30 is equal to ma. We'll add the term mg sine 30 over to the right hand side so that we'll have ma plus mg sine 30. We can perhaps factor out the mass so that we'll have the acceleration plus g sine 30. And then we'll go ahead and plug in the known values. Down here we noted that the mass was 5 kilograms, so we'll add 5 into the equation for m, and then we'll take the acceleration and add it to g times the sine of 30. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should get about 29.6 newtons, so this would be the correct answer for the tension. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that's shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.